We are not at a computer lab. Uh, contrary to what you see in front of you, we are at HCAM Studios to talk to David Antaki today of Hopkinton about his life and about his work and about uh, how we will be creating something with this amazing piece of uh, machinery here. I'm looking forward to the interview. Hi, David. Um, welcome to a setting in Hopkinton that you are familiar with, knowing you've been working here um, on cameras and as part of crew in different ways back in time. Mm -hmm. Now on your semester break from Northeastern, right? Yes. Thank you, yes. Cheryl. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes. Well, I'm uh, delighted that we could work that into your semester break schedule. Um, here at the studio, and we have this uh, big piece of equipment between us right now <laughs> to get started with, and I know it takes time. When I asked you um, to be able to share some of the experiences um, that you're involved with uh, during these years of college, uh, this uh, came up as a, this is a 3D printer, and this is a part of your life. And uh, I'm yes. grateful that you were able to carry this <laughs> over to the studio and tell us a little bit about it as a part of you. And this is not a homework or an assignment for Northeastern, right? Right, yeah. So um, it's not for class. It's just for, for myself, though, you know, um, in classes nowadays, it is incorporated into some classes of, of you know, how to use a 3D printer and, mm -hmm. um, you know, some projects of of try to make something and then go 3D print it um, at our school library, our school library. Because mm -hmm. nowadays, you know, especially in engineering, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, 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 um, it's a commonplace thing to have a 3D printer. And, and if you don't know how to use a 3D printer, um, well, I mean, you, you have to know how to use a 3D printer. You if, do. You're, if you're an engineer, yeah, because, wow. you know, um, companies nowadays, you'll, you'll find these at, um, at most engineering companies, mm -hmm. uh, like my engineering company um, that I work for right now, they they have a 3D printer, and uh, most clubs, most engineering clubs at Northeastern, they have uh, 3D printers to prototype products, mm -hmm. uh, such as um, you know, like your phone. I mean, we're not necessarily prototyping the next iPhone, but mm -hmm. um, you know, our other other engineering projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. So would there be other departments who also would have 3D printers and be creating things as well outside of computer engineering? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. Well, this is all new to me. This is my first <laughs> 3D printer that I have been introduced to and, um, and in learning about it from you. Um, is there anything else that uh, you would like to say about it for uh, mainstream viewers also who might not um, have seen them before we get started with making something. Right? Um, uh, well, it's it's been quite. I will say it's been quite a phenomenon of three D printing. So I remember just three years ago when I was in high school. Four years ago, um, they were really just starting to come on onto the mass market yeah. scene. Okay, not and that long ago. Then. Not that long ago, mm -hmm. and that's when they were um, a couple thousand dollars for mm -hmm. something like this. And it's it's you know it's been quite a revolution kind of like you know the first PC coming out or right. the iPhone coming out mm -hmm. um, a new technology that has swept through wow. um, this particular industry mm -hmm. um, through education and now it's in a lot of people's homes um, we have two of these in our apartment at Northeastern uh -huh. this one's mine and then my roommate has one as well mm -hmm. um, because um, the prices have dropped mm -hmm and now they are very prevalent. Mm -hmm. And yours is important for your work, for being a computer engineer major, and also, I understand, making some gifts? Yes, yeah. <laughs> you made your dad. <coughs> <laughs> yes, I printed my dad. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, um, for that particular gift, it was his birthday, so I Took a bunch of photos of him, mm -hmm. um, ran it through some software that made a 3D uh, model of him. I cleaned it up a little bit, uh, put it on the printer, printed it out, and um, uh, it was it was a bust, is what I believe it's called. 
Uh -huh. uh, like you put uh, the I had head it, of him. I put, yeah, I put his head on a pedestal. Okay. Um, <laughs> How big was it? It was it was very it was okay. like that big. Um, uh -huh. He has it on his shelf, but mm -hmm. it, it it was just a fun gift. It was, sure. It was, yeah. It was it was amusing Imagine to us because yeah. it it clearly looked like him, but mm -hmm. you know some features were a little off. So mm -hmm. wow. Um, Matt, you, so yeah, it's he amazing. I mean, your dad. yeah, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I so, cloned my dad into plastic. <laughs> so, um, and uh, thank you for bringing a printer <laughs> for us to have as yeah. part of the interview. Yeah. And we're going to make something now and then put it aside and continue yeah. talking. Yeah. Uh, what are we about to print? Yeah. So um, we'll just print this this die here. Ah, it's a dice, like a okay. rolling dice. Mm -hmm. um, so. It's quite trivial, you know, nothing too too technical, which is normally what I, I print, you know, like prototypes, which mm -hmm. can get very technical, sure. such as like rocket parts, uh -huh. um, such as like the nose cone to a rocket. Wow. Um, uh -huh. You know, stuff like that. What size rocket? Um, um, probably. Like, like this size rocket? Like to the ceiling, to the ceiling. or taller. Wow. You know, okay. That like tall rocket. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. you know, not like not like small mall rockets, but right. you know, parts these technical parts to um, very technical engineering things. All right. Basically. But, but today anyways, we make a die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> today we're going to make a die here yeah. that I I made. I modeled it, put it into the software. Mm -hmm. um, basically loaded it, made it, it made it into synthesized it into a file that I then. You then put onto the 3D printer, mm. and then all all we gotta do now is press play, mm. and it'll start printing printing what's in digital form here into plastic. Basically. Amazing! It's amazing, <laughs> and that's that's <laughs> yes. my job for today. That is your job. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Is... So, um, oh, it didn't. It went back to a different screen. Okay, okay so. So there, it's loaded onto the 3D printer. So now all you have to do here, mm -hmm. use that knob, spin it uh, this way, oh. counterclockwise. So this way? Yep. Uh, other way. Yep, there you go. Uh, keep going. Uh, a little bit more, all the way to the bottom. There you go. OK, okay. <laughs> now you're on it. Now you just got to press the button to make it start. Ready? Yep. Here we go. It's working. It's working. We're going to make a die. We are going to right. print. <laughs> yes, we're going to print That's, that. Well, that is uh, like uh, magic to me, but I know there's <laughs> a lot of science behind it. We're actually going to put it aside so we can talk a little more about you beyond uh, 3D printing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So uh, yeah, so magic. it's just going to calibrate, and then it'll start printing. All right. And then hopefully by the end of the interview, it will be done. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing what is created and uh, now we'll just uh, take a moment and move this wonderful piece of equipment. I'm looking okay. forward to seeing what happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, David, um, aside from working on 3D printers, um, you were recommended for an interview here uh, because you have spent a lot of your past time involved in community work in Hopkinton before you left for college. Um, and what year are you at Northeastern University? I am a second year. Yeah. Um, you know, at Northeastern we say first year, second year, third year because we do co-op, go off on right. work, mm -hmm. but sophomore equivalent. Okay. All right. <laughs> so. Um, but back in time, you uh, were very involved in community here. Um, and I am wondering if you could just take a couple minutes and tell a little bit about what kind of work you were involved with, perhaps how you see it maybe connected with what you're doing now at Northeastern, possibly. Um, I know there are different types of things you've been involved with. Right. Yeah, so um, when I was here in Hopkinton, Really, you know, how I was involved with the community was through HHS, through the, the high school mm -hmm. um, where I went, um, mainly through um, organizations at HHS, 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was a part of student council where we we did a lot of community service mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. um, sometimes in Boston for like Christmas in the city or something like that. Um, I did a lot. Which was uh, um, working uh, in the city at Christmas time and right, right. with uh, yeah. folks who were homeless, dealing with homelessness. Right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you may see it on, on the news. It's a pretty, mm -hmm. big, pretty big event. I think my mom did it this year. Mm -hmm. um, I know the St. John's Church here right. um, goes the the, the uh, youth group go to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's to cr it's to bring Christmas into the city for underserved um, or homeless and homeless mm -hmm. um, families and children. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's one of the that's one of the things that we did at Student Council, which was fun. Um, uh, I remember I would for H Cam. This is in middle school, I believe. Uh, I know I, I was I, I did a lot of photography for H Cam for mm -hmm. CN Hopkinton for mm -hmm. like some of the, um, uh, some of the events going on in Hopkinton, whether it was for the school for the high school, middle school, or just some event in Hopkinton. Um, and they'd be posted on the website. Right, right or? on cnhopkinton.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so that's that's a lot of responsibility when you're in middle school to <laughs> be a part of that and. Yeah, you're working on a crew also here, right? Yep, I mm -hmm. was part of H Cam. Mm -hmm. um, started that in middle school. My mom introduced me to H Cam, mm -hmm. and um, I was on crew here, doing shows, doing sports, sporting events, um, doing Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Yes. <laughs> um, I also through the the bands, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I connected through the community through the bands. I've done Hopping, the Hockington Summer Community Band for the past uh -huh. um, past many years. Um, so that is um, people of different generations getting together and playing right. music yeah. for yeah. the community to come out outside and listen to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's always fun. It's you know it's open to the community and broader and anyone near Hockington. Mm -hmm. And so every summer, you know. Um, and it, it's been growing. It's been growing steadily, which is awesome. But, wow. um, yeah, and um, anyone who plays an instrument. And what young, do you play for I music? play the trumpet. Trumpet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Um, and do you play trumpet solos? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I used to. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. You know, I used to compete in. Compete? Huh? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in like the, the district the band mm -hmm. in, in MICA with, mm -hmm. the, with the bands I was mm -hmm. involved with the jazz and concert band mm. at the high school. Mm -hmm. And then I did solo stuff um, like Central Districts. Mm -hmm. um, it's a competition, a solo trumpet competition, um, or not a solo competition. Um, it, you audition for, to be a part of the Central District band. Mm -hmm. um, so I did, I did that. Wow. Um, also playing trumpet, I, um, I played taps, you know, at some mm -hmm. of the Memorial Days. Mm -hmm. um, that was always great to uh, to uh, play taps to honor Hopkinton's veterans. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, um, that's a great deal. I can see why you were recommended for uh, your way of contributing to community before you left for uh, Northeastern. <laughs> I, um, I tried. I tried my best to yeah, give back. Yeah. And um, just curious about trumpet. Are you still playing these days with all? else you have going on? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do not as much. Uh -huh. You know, my first my first semester at Northeastern, I was part of the Wind Ensemble, which oh. is mm -hmm. um, Northeastern's auditioned uh, band. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a lot of fun. I um, uh, learned a lot from that. Mm -hmm. And then second semester, I was part of the um, Northeastern Pep Band. Wow. It's a little different, mm -hmm. not... Uh, a little more um, uh, crazy, fun, uh, you know, however you want to word that. Is that, that a marching you know. band? No, not a marching band. Mm -hmm. It's like the pet band here at Hopkinton. Um, well, I guess I'm not familiar with the pet band. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's... it's you, a spirited uh, band? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's a, a band that mm -hmm. plays at the sporting events mm -hmm. to, you know, pet fans up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was much louder playing, you know. Yeah, yeah. No mm -hmm. dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, well, I shouldn't say that dynamics but much louder dynamics right um, yeah. 
So that uh, was just recent you did that, right? That, yeah, that was, uh -huh. well, that was my second semester hmm. at Northeastern. So that was my freshman year. That was last year. Mm -hmm. And okay. then this past semester, um, I, I took off from, from any music group so that I could focus just playing on my own mm -hmm. and improving mm -hmm. um, my technique. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. I didn't have to, um, this way I could improve my technique and change it around mm -hmm. without it affecting um, my, uh, my ability to play in these other in, mm -hmm. in these other groups or affecting. So you um, want to keep it going and yeah. and play what kind of music that you want to do, right, right? Rather than get boxed into a particular group yeah. for um, moving forward in yeah. playing. So you have any plans where you're going to perform trumpet? <laughs> no, no, not yet. No, not right now. No. Uh, well, it's impressive yeah. that you're working on it with all else that's going on in your life and being a student in computer engineering and computer programming right now, is that Yeah, right? it's, it's Northeastern's computer engineering and computer science combined majors, what they oh, call it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's Well, that in sounds between, challenging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm getting through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge, but you know, you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously you must have interest in it uh, between that and uh, what you're doing with the 3D printer in your spare time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And um, so how is it going in, in the computer world it's, of study? It's, it's going good. Yeah. Um, a lot of interesting, interesting things in the computer world, computer science world going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Um, currently, I'm, I'm not in classes. I'm, wor I'm um, on co-op working at um, a company called Boston Engineering. Mm -hmm. um, it's an engineering firm. and um, consulting firm. Um, wow. That so sounds like good work. Uh, yeah. Good yeah. work experience, right? <laughs> yeah, it wow. is. And so that's every uh, day, nine to five kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Eight to five. Eight to five. <laughs> well, thank you for coming here right after work today. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So you'll be doing that right up till you get back into the semester, right? That until um, middle of summer. So then I'll okay. have two months off and then go back oh, for the I fall see. semester. So mm -hmm. six months, okay. eight months down the line, I'll be going back to classes. I see. So no yeah. classes otherwise right now. Correct. All right. Um, and uh, I know you're also involved with rockets. Can you say a few sentences about that? Yeah. Um, you were going to a launch one time when I was yes. trying to schedule. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So we had to postpone our interview for because I had to go to one of our launches <laughs> down in Maryland, mm -hmm. MDRA, because, you know, um, well, I should back up. So I got involved with the rocket club at Northeastern called Aerospace NU. Hmm. Um, my first semester, um, fortunately, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not a part of it now. Um, hmm. uh, I decided to focus um, my efforts elsewhere, but um, I'm glad I was a part of it. I learned a lot. Um, they do a, a lot of cool, cool things there. They're the largest engineering group on Northeastern's campus. And so um, we call it Rocket Club, but um, we do a whole breadth, um, a whole wide range of things from UAVs, uh, drones, that is, to mm -hmm. rockets. Mm -hmm. um, so like the group I was in was um, called Competition Rocketry, where we were competing in um, NASA's uh, collegiate rocket competition. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we were developing um, a rocket and a payload, which was a rover, to um, launch land and then do a bunch of uh, rover tasks. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, that, that launch that um, we had to postpone this interview for was down to Maryland to test, uh, to test some of our rockets, mm -hmm. both for the competition um, and just for other projects within the club, because um, we do a whole range of projects. Um, um, Are you interested in working in space? That, uh, yes and no. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely a very interesting field mm. right now. Um, as you know, uh, you know, with, with, with SpaceX and Boeing, um, mm. or, well, I mean, not as you, I shouldn't assume people know about this, but um, <laughs> it being very forefront for me. Yeah. Uh, Boeing and SpaceX um, are competing in commercial, a commercial crew program to, um, for a contract with NASA to send hmm. um, uh, 
Americans back to space, to moon, to the moon, and mm -hmm. to Mars. And do you want to go to Mars? I would like to. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay. And you know, it's definitely in my future. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely, my generation will definitely have the opportunity to go to Mars, mm -hmm. most likely, um, or more probable than not. Um, especially with all the startup um, rocket companies that have, have come online, mm -hmm. um, um, credited to Elon Musk and SpaceX, mm -hmm. um, opening up the, the private industry, um, or rather opening up the space industry to the private sector. Because um, originally, or, or before 2008, it was really, um, it was really all, pub all in the public sector with mm -hmm. NASA. Mm -hmm. um, but now it, it um, there's been a lot of great wow. innovation mm -hmm. with um, you know you may see on the news like with mm -hmm. SpaceX um, drastically reducing the cost of space travel mm -hmm. um, with them landing their rockets upright um, you know on land or on a ship out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's if a whole new world, yeah. and you are in the midst of it. Yeah. It sounds like you're doing exciting things. Yeah. Um, and I know we're running out of time already, <laughs> and I don't know if I already said wow. this, but when I started my interview notes for you, I wrote Creative Force, uh, yes. because that's the sense I have for you. But I want to also cover your film uh, producing yeah. and your involvement with uh, the uh, uh, educational leadership. Yeah, so it's Enjoy Life Education. Um, it started with Evan Gundes being a teacher here at the middle school, science teacher, he's my teacher. Um, he started this after school program called Enjoy Life Club. Um, it then turned into a class at the middle school. It's like um, motivational kind of a club. Right, yeah, to... so, so really the whole point of Enjoy Life is to really uh, teach, um, to, to teach young adults about things that aren't taught in school, like um, how to be happy with yourself and how to, um, um, how to, how to deal with adversity, um, hmm. but pick yourself up, brush yourself off, Aren't move always on. talked about in school. Um, yeah. But in this yeah. club, and you've been a part of it. Right, so it was a club, and so now it's moved off to its own entity, its own company mm -hmm. called Enjoy Life Education, which I've been um, working with the past couple of years and producing some media wow. with Evran okay. and, and his company. Because um, in your spare time, you're also a film producer. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's, <clears throat> it's a great hobby of mine, uh, mm -hmm. making videos and films. Uh, I don't do as much of it as I did before. Like in high school, I did a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but now um, it's a hobby and I just make some mm -hmm. videos for fun. Wow. Um, and well, this past summer, I made, um, I, I was part of the, me the media team for Enjoy Life Education mm -hmm. to produce some content um, wow, for, for, for them. Mm -hmm. And I know you also brought a sample of that we can take a look at. Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. um, the video here, the film here is, is um, a video I produced along with uh, Matt Bird, who was the other uh, video producer, along with um, it was five of us mm -hmm. um, as part of the media team, as we called ourselves. Mm -hmm. So well, um, I got to say thank you to them for, yes. for helping um, over the summer. Um, it, was, it was great to, to have them as part of the team. But yeah, so we, we produced this film to um, kind of as a commercial to showcase what the Leadership Academy is mm -hmm. and what we're all about. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look.
putting into it. That's really the bigger question. Because what you get out of it is completely dependent on you. You never know what's going to happen. Take advantage of your life right now. We are wasting opportunities. Moments are going by like crazy. You gotta live every moment as if it's your last. Someday, it will be. You're striving for greater and greater things, but it's not going to be easy. It is not easy living this lifestyle. It's not. It's tough to lead yourself, but that's hopefully why you came here this week. And hopefully we gave you some tools. Do it. Do not wait for the world to end before you start bringing your life up to a new level. Wow, that is powerful <laughs> footage that you created. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I noticed yeah, so. the the music, the voice, <clears throat> the film work there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I gotta say thank you to to Matt, Ali, Noah, mm -hmm. Nee, um, who helped who helped produce that. Wow, and I am impressed uh, to you and your team. Let me just <laughs> shake your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, oh, well, the last thing we need to do is check and see if we have created the die from the 3D printer That's before right. we end our interview. It went right. by fast, <laughs> this interview, so much. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. This is an actual die. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's a creation of you and this uh, fantastic machine.